Ever since the wheel was invented in 3500 BC, humans have been getting around, although it wasn't until 1872 that the first proper combustion engine was invented. In just under 150 years, we've gone from getting around slowly to getting around super fast. Most people are all about hyping up big machines, but what about the little guys? In today's video, we're talking about the 15 smallest vehicles with powerful engines. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to The Supreme, and click the notification bell for more lit content. Let's get rolling! Number 15. The Mini Kenworth Truck Whoa, this is cute and cool at the same time. Look at this kid riding in a kid-sized truck. Awesome design too. This one looks custom built, but there is a company out there that specifically makes realistic toy trucks that kids can drive. In 2018, Irish company Scaled Rigs announced a line of mini trucks for little truckers. The company is staffed by experienced engineers and manufacturers of heavy machinery, but creates realistic toys for kids who like big vehicles. And they do, don't they? Kids seem to love trucks. One of the coolest toys created by these guys is the battery-powered Scania S730, designed at igniting imaginations and passions for trucks. The toy can actually drive just like a real truck. It has six pneumatic tires, a 24-volt electric motor drivetrain, working lights, and a functioning fifth wheel. The vehicle can reach top speeds of 3.7 miles per hour. The toy comes with an inbuilt engine noise too to make it sound like the real thing. Check out this video of the toy truck compared to the real thing. How cool is that? I'm not a kid, but I kind of want one of these. The kids look like they're having way more fun than all the rest of us. Number 14. Flying Gravity Suit Iron Man Is that you? You guys may think that flying jetpack super suits are the stuff of Marvel comic books and movies, but actually, they're starting to become a reality. The Gravity Jet Suit was invented by Richard Browning of Gravity Industries. Founded in 2017, the company created a flying suit in the vein of Tony Stark. Browning had grown up making model airplanes under the guidance of his aeronautical engineering father. Gravity Industries has made owning a jet suit a possibility, meaning that humans can fly now. The suit is made from 3D printed parts, has a top speed of 32 miles per hour, and runs on diesel fuel. Flying in the suits allows a person to soar 12,000 feet into the air, which, although that sounds cool, also sounds kinda terrifying. You probably wouldn't want to go that high, though. The suit burns out of fuel rather quickly and only allows for about a four-minute flight. For that reason, it's best to hover near the ground, although Browning and his company are working on something more advanced. You have to be rich to fly, though. The suit will set you back about $443,000. For that price, you can probably just buy a small plane. In 2017, the suit won a Guinness World Record for the fastest speed in a body-controlled jet engine powered by a suit. Wearing the suit essentially turns a person's body into a vehicle. Would you wear this suit if it meant you could fly? I'd be tempted. I've always wanted to be able to fly, but this does seem a little risky. Number 13. The Badger Assault Tank Say hello to the world's smallest man tank. It may be small, but it sure is mighty. This micro machine holds the Guinness World Record for being the smallest passenger tank on Earth. It may look cute, sweet, and funny, kind of like the animal it's named after, but actually this vehicle is an all-terrain tank that's capable of breaching buildings and breaking down doors. Seriously, it can withstand small blasts and large caliber rounds. In fact, a handgun won't even damage the paintwork. The tank was designed by military vehicle veterans, How and How, who make armored military-grade vehicles. This little tank was commissioned by the Civil Protection Services of California and is just 3 feet 3 inches wide. The Badger truly is a little beast and a great small and unassuming weapon for modern combat. Don't believe me? Well, it's currently in use by a number of SWAT teams across the United States. Number 12. The FLS Microjet Teeny tiny vehicles are in. The FLS Microjet is just 16 feet long compared to ordinary commercial planes that are 160 feet long, or private jets that are around 33 feet long. You get it, it's small. Despite its dinky size, the plane can fly at speeds of 320 miles per hour and has a range of 230 miles. 
That's roughly the distance from LA to Las Vegas. The entire airplane weighs just 416 pounds, but can also carry an additional weight of 440 pounds. The microjet is powered by a quantum turbine engine system, which provides a 265 pound thrust. The first model of this tiny plane was created in the 1970s, but has received a bunch of safety and design improvements over the years. It has an angle of attack system, improved wing aerodynamics, and an increased fuel capacity. This little airplane has been a regular feature at air shows over the years, impressing crowds with its tiny size and high function. Number 11. Gen H4 Helicopter Whoa, now this is kinda ridiculous. Check out the world's smallest helicopter right here. The Gen H4 Coaxial Helicopter was first flown in 1998. It weighs just 155 pounds and can reach speeds of 55 miles per hour. The vehicle has four twin-cylinder Gen 125 engines that feed into a central transmission powering two sets of rotors that turn in opposing directions. This tiny little one-man flying machine was invented by Janai Yanagisiwa, the president of the Japanese company Engineering System Co. The flying machine is controlled by the one-person pilot who can steer using a control bar. How high up can you go? Around half a mile into the sky. If you're thinking that the Gen H4 looks dangerous, perhaps your fears will be calmed knowing that there's also a safety ballistic parachute. You might be excited to know that you can actually buy a Gen H4 for yourself in the form of a build-at-home kit. If you have a spare $30,000, then you can make your own personal flying dream come true. Personally, I'm not sure I trust myself to build something that can fly, so I hope the instructions are pretty good. Would you build your own aircraft? More importantly, would you trust it? The world's smallest Jeep. Tiny Jeeps get the job done. Bawar Singh from Punjab, India, built the world's smallest Jeep in response to chaotic traffic on the notoriously gridlocked Indian roads. The small car is light and allows the driver to pass through narrow spaces, beating the jam. Singh said, I designed this car to help people escape heavy jams and have an easy ride. The car comes with all the important features, rear lights, a horn, a steering wheel, but it's actually made from the tires and engines of a 125cc Honda Activa and Maruti Suzuki scooters. The small but speedy vehicle can reach nearly 40 miles per hour, which makes it perfect for city driving. Singh's first idea for the Mini Jeep came in 1975 but financial and time restraints set back his project a few decades. Now, he's made around 18 mini Jeeps in the past eight years. Unlike a lot of small but powerful vehicles on this list, Singh's Jeeps are actually affordable. They cost under $1,000, which is great for a small car that can get you around quickly. Brand new full-size Jeeps cost upwards of $25,000 for just the basic model and you definitely can't drive them down a side street. Singh hopes to upscale his business and start making the vehicles full time. I'm here for that idea. I think these cars are pretty cool. The Mosquito XE. Okay, so this looks a little more legitimate than the Gen H4 that we met earlier. Named after the tiny insects with a big bite, the Mosquito XE is an ultralight helicopter with just one seat and no cockpit. They're kinda like big drones that you can actually fly. The minimalist helicopter carries 12 gallons of fuel and has a range of 150 miles, so you can't go too far, but you can definitely make a quick trip. The flying vehicle uses a compact radio MZ202 engine and is intended to be simple to fly. The little choppers were designed by Canadian company Innovator Technologies and are sold as home builds for $20,000. $20,000 for a helicopter isn't a whole lot for people who have the cash. There is a sad story associated with the Mosquito XE though. Co-designer John Updegrove died flying one of the mini helicopters in July 2018 when his Mosquito crashed on the banks of a Highwood River in Calgary. Updegrove was a self-taught pilot who knew the machine well. His co-creator assured people that the Mosquito is no more dangerous than any other flying aircraft and that the crash was a tragic accident. Peel P-50 This little cutie is the world's smallest production car and is considered the holy grail for micro car collectors, which are a real group of people. They love tiny cars. Honestly, there is a niche for everyone. There were just 
50 P50 micro cars manufactured between 1962 to 1965 by Peel Engineering Company and, uh, well, they don't have a reverse gear. How does that even work? I guess the car is so small and light that you could just pick it up and turn it around if you needed to. The cars have a 49cc four-stroke engine and can reach a top speed of 28 miles per hour. I guess that was fine for hopping around in the 1960s. The car is a manual drive and has just three gears, which I guess makes sense if it can't go over 30. The tiny cars are just 54 inches long and 39 inches wide weighing just 130 pounds. So you can literally pick them up. At first I was joking, but that's kind of ridiculous. Is it crazy that these are certified as street legal? The car sold for the equivalent of $8,500 in their day, but they're worth a lot more nowadays. In March 2016, a P50 sold for $176,000 at an auction. Of the 50 first made, only 27 are still accounted for. So they are pretty valuable. In 2010, nearly 50 years after they were made, they were officially recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the smallest production car ever constructed. <laughs> Crick Crick Cricket. Well, this is a whole load of fun in a small package. Also the name, Crick Crick, is pretty whimsical. The Crick Crick gets its name from the sound a cricket makes, according to French language. It's a tiny homemade electric battery-powered airplane. The plane has four LiPo battery-powered 15cc motors. This allows the plane to reach a max speed of 162 miles per hour during flight. The plane first flew at Paris's Le Bourget Airport in June 2010 at the Green Aviation Show and was funded by the European Aeronautic Defense and Space Company. The airplane's first flight lasted just seven minutes, although pilot Dejir Estein reported it was very smooth. The tiny flying machine is just 185 pounds in weight and has a 16-foot wingspan. Today's Cree Cree is based on a 1974 model that appeared in an issue of Air Progress magazine. In the flesh, the Cree Cree is even more shocking. It really is small and it's hard to get the kind of perspective from images and videos. It kind of looks like a toy airplane, except it can really fly and it's pretty fast. Would you take a ride in this kind of a plane? Small Toe What a name for a motorbike. Swedish man Tom Wiberg created the world's smallest motorbike and uh, it looks like this. What is that? Is that a joke? Small Toe is 1.55 inches in height, weighs 2.4 pounds, and has a top speed of 1.24 miles per hour. You literally may as well just walk. Okay, so maybe small toe doesn't make the cut for being a small vehicle with a powerful engine, because the engine here has a horsepower of just 0.3. Still though, the bike is so funny I needed to share it with you. It seems that world record holder Wiberg built the machine around a tiny ethanol-powered engine around the size of one you would find in a radio-controlled model airplane. All a rider can do on this motorbike is move forward. There are no brakes, lights, gears, or anything else that would classify the machine as a vehicle. Nonetheless, Wiberg managed to ride the thing for 32.8 feet and said he would have gone further if there wasn't a crate in his way. Too bad the thing can't steer. Would you guys want a pointless motorbike? The Bruch Mopetta. With a name like Bruch Mopetta, this tiny car sounds super classy. Just 14 of the three-wheeled little vehicles were ever made in the 1950s, and there are just five still around to this day, which means that they're pretty valuable. The car goes at a top speed of 30 miles per hour and has a handlebar rather than a steering wheel. The engine is a 50cc ILO V50, and the vehicle has just three gears. You need to be small to drive this car. It's just five feet, nine inches in length, three feet wide, and three feet, eight inches high. The micro car is not quite as light as the POP50, weighing in at 187 pounds. It seems that the designer, Egon Bruch, was expecting a contract to build 140,000 of these cars, but the deal was called off because the trend of big, powerful cars began to rise and the manufacturers thought that nobody would buy a tiny car. 
Of the five still in existence, two are owned by Israel-based dental surgeon Dr. Sasha, although he intends to sell one of his many cars at auction as he feels it isn't fair that he has a monopoly. The car is set to go at auction for a guide price of between $102,000 to $136,000. That's a whole lot of cash for a car with no steering wheel. The Smallest Submarine Small spaces and deep ocean depths are two things high on my list of stuff that terrifies me. Would you guys want to go for a ride in this? Yikes! Ukrainian man Vasily Chukur built a single-seater submarine from parts he ordered from Russian industrial companies basing his design on a beer barrel. It's reported that Chikor spent over $12,000 on materials for his project. It seems that the Odessa man was torn between building a helicopter or a sub, but chose the marine vessel because he saw it as a dream. Once it's registered, it will be the first solo-made private sub ever in Ukrainian history. On water, the submarine can reach speeds of 4 knots above water and 3 knots underwater, which translates to between 3 and 4 miles per hour. The little vessel has a ballast chamber and an air tank and can be submerged 328 feet down. I'd be terrified to go underwater in this tin can. Honda Moto Compo the 1980s were a pretty cool time. People forgot about the Honda Moto Compo, but really we had it all figured out about 40 years ago. The Moto Compo was a trunk bike, literally a motorbike designed to go in the trunk of a Honda City or a Honda Today. The bike had a 49cc two-stroke engine and 2.5 horsepower. It wasn't going anywhere fast, but it was a neat little idea, plus it only weighed about 99 pounds. The bike was just a few inches larger than a suitcase and the idea was that once the car was parked, the trunk bike could take a person that extra mile. The Moto Compo is Honda's smallest ever scooter and is kinda ridiculous to look at. I do love its retro style though. It comes in white, red, or yellow and these days I can imagine a hipster pulling off a ride in one of these. I don't know about the rest of us though. Please enjoy the 1980s commercial for this bike. It's pretty priceless. <laughs> The Riva I. This electric car got a lot of hate, which is a shame because this early day electric car was environmentally friendly and compact. Sadly for this car's reputation, I think it was released too late. People loved novelty tiny cars in the 60s and the 80s, but when the Riva I was released in 2006, people wanted to get places fast. The Indian built miniature vehicle has a range of just 40 miles and a top speed of 42 miles per hour, which is fine in a congested city, but not so great when you want to hit the road. The incredible thing about this car is that you can literally plug it into the wall and charge it like you would charge your phone. Known in Europe as the G-Wiz, this taste for the car was widespread, and many saying it was simply too cramped to be roadworthy. The designers advertised it could seat two adults and two children, but that was not found to be the case. If people valued any semblance of comfort, anyway, Auto Express magazine labeled it the worst car ever made, claiming it had the performance of a sleepy vole and the structural integrity of slippers. I just think that people were taking it too seriously. Like, relax, it's a micro car. It isn't trying to be a Jaguar. The Volksjäger Meet the smallest jet fighter of all time, the Volksjäger, or People's Fighter. This micro-war plane came from the Nazi regime and was released as a cheap emergency lightweight fighter powered by just one BMW 003 engine. The war effort was stretched by 1944, so it was imperative to mass-produce something cheap that a teenager from the Hitler Youth could pilot with very little training. The plane was actually very dangerous to fly, and landing was a real risk. The emergency jet weighed just 3,660 pounds, just a tenth of a standard fighter aircraft. The benefit that came from being comparatively light as a feather was that it was very fast. It could fly at 520 miles per hour, which was very competitive at the time. Manufacturers Heinkel also named the plane the Sparrow in reference to the small, speedy birds. Despite the hype, production was rushed and more planes crashed because of structural failures than were shot down in combat. The 30-minute fuel capacity was also a major problem. Although the plane was light and could fly fast, it couldn't fly for long at all. The planes were quickly phased out at a time that Germany was clearly losing the war.
So that was the 15 smallest vehicles with powerful engines. What do you think about this list? I've heard a lot about planes, cars, helicopters, submarines, trucks, and motorcycles today. It's been really eye-opening. I had no idea how small we've made things. Would you guys want to take a ride on any of these vehicles? Maybe a private helicopter is for you? I can't help but feel that all of these small vehicles are just souped up toys and that some of them are actually kind of dangerous. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below.